I was raised uh, in Louisiana on a farm, and when uh, you're from a big family and you're raised on a farm, you become very close to your uh, brothers and sisters. And this is uh, a poem about my brothers. It's called The Philosopher's Club. I remember those hot southern afternoons sitting on the shady side of the tin wash house, slicing into watermelons cool on the cracked concrete floor of that ancient building. The melon juice ran down our chins as my brothers and I leaned in old leatherback chairs and contemplated everything from the New Orleans Saints to why girls are so stupid. The clouds crawled by on lazy roller skates and the south breeze carried in a concert of jasmine perfume as knee-high our beloved tiny cow bellowed for her afternoon milking. We didn't know it then, but we were kings of the universe and we owned everything that was worth having and knew everything worth knowing. Pat, the oldest brother with a heart as big as his frame, and Steve, the comedian, who was a combination of Elvis and Barney Fife, were endless encyclopedias of how everything was and would be. I, their eager student, sat absorbed in every word of wisdom that fell from their lips. The Plato's launched answers to all questions as my brothers spit out watermelon seeds and their philosophy spilled to the ground among the rhymes. Time plays its cruel little joke, robbing boys of sense and sensitivities, replacing them with responsibility and the fear of being wrong. These years later, when we meet, we shake hands and seek in each other's youth harboring eyes, those sages lost so many eons ago. This is my wife's favorite poem. We travel back and forth to Louisiana all the time. And this is about a place that we passed up on uh, Interstate 10. Two miles, it's called the school bus graveyard. Two miles outside of Winnie, Texas, there's a school bus graveyard right off Interstate 10. The tangerine yellow coffin shaped dinosaurs parked on mud that's caked to dry rotted tires contain the laughter of children that drifts through the wind of the Western Plain. The seats absorbed preteen passions. Notes scribbled on the backs proclaim, someone loves someone forever, though forever ended a long time ago. The calculations for homework completed in before school minutes fell onto the black rubber floors, bounced to the ceilings and into the brains of children who became adults oblivious to the mysteries of the greatest common denominator. The headlights, some cracked and missing glass lens, stand guard on either side of rusty radiators. Squint just right at sunrise to see the suggestion of tears seeping along the bottom of the aluminum seals as the old bus is long for just one more route. I had a, a great father. Uh, he was a, a carpenter, a farmer, a rancher, a poet, and a, a philosopher in his own right. And this is a poem about my dad. It's called Dad's Tape Measure. He was a carpenter. His tape measure, a rapier hanging from his belt, snapped and sang and pulled tight across two by fours and sheets of plywood to measure twice cut once. He rulered people in the same way, letting them talk and talk. He never said a word, but the tape measure in his head stretched across a speaker's character, measuring honesty, veracity, complexity, and intelligence. A yellow, flat pencil marked where to cut across foreheads, lips, and words. When he sliced through you, he knew just where to draw the saw. You were cut in two before you realized the figuring was over. I'm a, a cancer survivor, and um, one day my uh, goddaughter was sitting on my lap and she was fingering the scar on the side of my neck and she asked, what happened? So this poem is about that time. 
The poem is called uh, Scar, and it was published in the Survivor's Review. The scar that travels from my right ear to the middle of my throat is a masterpiece of surgeon skill. A surgeon who said to death, you will not have him. My rigid, ragged friend is a testament to a small army of healthcare workers who listened to the sliced air of the sickle and came to my aid. When curious children trace my badge with tiny innocent fingers and ask, what happened? I smile and say, we won. Our children have grown and have moved out, and my wife and I now spend a lot of time together. And uh, uh, we drive back and forth uh, to Louisiana. And this poem's about that. It's called uh, Musician Wife. On long drives, my neck tendons become guitar strings. My wife reaches over, places her velvet palm on the back of my head, and strums me a love song. And this is my last poem. It's written in the uh, modern minimalist style. And uh, this was actually uh, uh, published as a centerpiece of the Chaffee Review in California. Uh, the Chaffee Review is published in Cucamonga, California. And I just, I wanted to read this poem so I could come up in front of people and say Cucamonga. Um, I was married uh, for, from, from my culture, where I'm from, uh, late in life. I got married at 29, and usually people marry very early and start having children right away. Um, so marrying late in life, like I did, is a venial sin in, in, uh, for Louisiana Catholics. This poem is about love. It's called Best Seller. Love is the exclamation point of my life. It was formerly a question mark. Thank God for rewrites. And that's my poems. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. We'll have Scott McKay up to read some of his poetry. He'll be coming up now to read some of his poetry. But thank you all for coming. We have some books. Uh, if anybody needs a book, uh, we'll be happy to sell you a book. And I'll be happy to sign it for you. Again, thank you all for coming. <laughs>